hello, everybody. Thank you, Cameron and Arturo, for inviting me out here. And thank all of you for wanting to come out here and listen to me talk about this stuff. Um, as Cameron said, my name is Jeremy Mumenthaler, and I'm a design engineer at The Noun Project. The, uh, the Noun Project is a crowdsourced visual dictionary that allows everybody to um, communicate visually. Uh, we help people communicate by giving them beautiful pictograms. Things that they communicate are uh, important things like human rights, movements that uh, move humanity forward. Uh, they communicate things that save lives, like in case of fire, use stairs. Communicate widely understood imagery of things like men's, women's room, um, things that you may need to use. <laughs> and what we've done at Noun Project is we've gathered thousands of creators all over the world um, to create these pictograms for us to use and share. And they upload them every day and that number grows really, uh, really consistently and it's uh, getting rather large. So what I wanted to talk to you guys tonight was about the beauty of communication. Obviously at the Noun Project uh, we deal with these forms of communication all day. Um, The topic of tonight, aesthetics, obviously, um, got me really excited because I feel uh, there's, there's always kind of a lack of uh, understanding of, of the use of the word. Um, people use it all the time, and they're not exactly sure what, uh, what they mean by it at all, all times. Um, in communication, I want to kind of tackle what aesthetics can mean within, within that. Whoa, jumping around. There you go. So for the sake of this talk, I like how we're framing aesthetics in the frame of our own talks. Um, so uh, the study of and critical reflection of art culture and nature, I think is a, is a really great uh, definition of aesthetics. Um, but what it comes down to for me is kind of that idea of what makes something beautiful. Um, David Hume said that beauty in things exists in the mind in which contemplates them, which uh, I really resonate with because I think in a lot of ways that beauty uh, is, is, is very subjective. Um, I go to the museum a lot. I live across the street from LACMA, so I'm there all the time. And I, I like to people watch as much as I like to look at the art. And you hear that question like, why is this art? Why is this hanging on the wall? You hear that all the time. And that's kind of dealing directly with this idea of aesthetics of, you know, what is beauty? Why do we value these things? Um, and with, in going with what Hume was saying, I think that it really only takes a, f a few moments for you to look at a piece of art and understand whether or not you believe it's beautiful or not, whether you think it belongs on that wall. Um, that, an idea that goes along with uh, aesthetics is this idea of immediacy, which is just that. Uh, you know, the piece that draws us in is immediately felt when we're, when we're looking at something that we deem beautiful. Um, and we try to like rationalize that after the fact, but it's really that initial feeling that decides for us. So our point of view is kind of how we decide what is beautiful and what um, is not. And that's a combination of our, our own perspective, our knowledge path, and uh, that specific moment in time. So I'm a designer, and I'm kind of figuring most people here are designers in some sort. Can I get a, like a show of hands real quick of 
people who consider themselves design, design adjacent, cool. So it's <laughs> adjacent, design adjacent, great. Um, so as the designers and design adjacent know, you know, design is, it's just a bunch of systems and conventions we use in order to accomplish really specific goals. And the way that we um, approach those goals is by creating these objects. Um, and really what objects are is they're just a collection of, um, of, of basic shapes put together. And especially when we're dealing with iconography, right? It's very apparent. Um, you know, this is a triangle and a circle. It's two of the most basic shapes you can have. And there's an infinite amount of ways you can combine them in order to communicate lots of different ideas. Um, it's really just about manipulating those forms in order to create uh, uh, the idea that you're trying to communicate. So, you know, we look at icons all day, and uh, the question always kind of comes up, um, especially when people come into our studio, what makes a good icon? Um, you know, what makes an icon iconic? And that's not always like the easiest thing to say offhand. And I think it has to do a lot with the combination of aesthetics and design. Uh, when an icon is communicating something quickly and efficiently, um, it's when we've applied the, uh, the classic design principles of, of, of shape and form together. That really is when it, an icon uh, works. Uh, the third principle in Dieter Rahm's 10 principles of design um, starts with uh, beautiful objects affect our everyday lives, but only well executed beautiful objects can be beautiful. Good design is aesthetic. And this really resonates with me because uh, what the, the, the part that we perceive, whether it's in art or whether it's in you know, these icons, is that aspect of well crafted. Um, piece that's, you know, it, not only is it communicating the thing that you need it to, but it's done in a way that we respect. We understand that it was made by people or, you know, that it, that it was created and um, the systems and conventions used just line up ever so perfectly. So the form becomes the beautiful part. Uh, the form is what accomplishes that well-executed uh, aspect of design. As we can see in the Barcelona chair um, by Mies van der Rohe, the architect, uh, it's a well-crafted object that allows someone to sit. It accomplishes that goal of allowing someone to sit. Um, the icon of this Barcelona chair is a well-crafted object that allows people to understand the idea that there's a place to sit somewhere. Um, which I think is this really interesting aspect when you pull, you know, flatten something and do a 2D surface and you make it um, this simple icon shape. A successful icon um, has a quick and a powerful message. Uh, you know, you can't really do anything more to it and you can't take anything away. Um, it's kind of at that perfect moment of communicating something uh, in just an instant, as we said earlier. Um, as uh, Paul Rand said, design is the method of putting form and content together. Design, just as art, has multiple definitions. There is no single definition. Design can be art. Design can be aesthetics. Design is so simple, that's why it's so complicated. Uh, which is not that whole long thing, but just this last part, design is so simple, that's why it's so complicated, has is, is been a really great mantra for, for me working at the Noun Project specifically uh, because when we look at these good icons, we, we really are seeing the most simplified shape. But what it takes to get there is a, a reductive aspect that's, that's really rather complicated. Um, so communicating a message pictorially is uh, really just as simplifying the, um, the form to its, its perfect essence. Um, this one here is the um, 
waterproof, which I, is just like one of the most beautiful things I think I've ever seen. <laughs> I get really excited about these things. Uh, so it, I, I, was really, I had a really fun time putting together this presentation because I really got to go through a lot of our content and find these icons that just really like I've connected with over the years. Uh, you know, when you see the form of a, of a simple shape, you know, again, these are just built out of those, you know, three basic shapes, uh, you know, pieces of geometry, um, you can immediately understand, you know, what's what's happening here, what it's trying to be communicated. Uh, you know, there can be, and this is perfect, um, <laughs> there can be a lot of tension and there can be a lot of emotion uh, expressed in just that like quick second, like you, you saw it, you knew what it was trying to say, um, and you felt it. I could go on for days, these are so beautiful. And I don't know if you guys agree with me, but I, there's sometimes when we see content come through the site and you just feel, I, like I think to myself, like I would just love this tattooed on my face right now because it's just, <laughs> it's that beautiful. Um, you just want to embody it. Um, this one in particular, one of my favorites. And like there's no denying, it's beautiful. Look, like, <laughs> you know it, it's, it's, it, it, it takes a second. It's immediate. You, you know when an icon is trying to tell you a story. So obviously this one, you know, everyone had that reaction right away. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a depressing story, but it's a story. Um, there's so much emotion put there with just, you know, it's mostly circles. And you can tell when You can tell when that story gets resolved, <laughs> just as equally. You can tell when it has a message instantly. You can understand the object that it's representing just by that simple outline. Beautiful, everyday, simple object. Or something a little bit more abstract but still the form is beautiful. It communicates its message really, really simply and really quickly. When an icon or design for that matter reveals its beauty, you can know that just after a glance, um, it wants you to feel a certain way and you feel that way. So now that we kind of seen a lot of really beautiful you know, design in the way that, uh, you know, us at the Noun Project see it every day. Um, we, we had to take that, uh, that, those aspects of beautiful communication and try to um, share that with our thousands of creators who are all over the world. Um, you know, obviously the, the design greats, right, they catch up on this really quickly, but, uh, you know, not everybody who's, who's creating these uh, communication methods are, are the design greats. They're, they're just beginning. So when we opened the door to the Noun Project for outside um, submissions, um, we really wanted that quality level to remain really high. Uh, you know, we opened the door, people started creating like overnight and, and submitting these things. Um, just tons of them from all over the world. It was really, really amazing. Um, and they, they started using our, our guidelines and our examples um, of the content that was already within this language that we were building. And our guidelines are directly inspired by some of the great pictogram creators you know, throughout time. Um, Otto Neorath, who's designed this beautiful gem. Um, he's also the founder of Isotype. And just a, a prolific um, communication designer. Uh, and the AIGA's prolific 1970s Department of Transportation icon uh, uh, iconography set designed by uh, Roger Cook and Don um, Schanowski is pretty much the backbone for how we decided to create uh, the, where our aesthetic comes from. As our uploads rapidly grew, um, the numbers of ideas 
the number of ideas that we could communicate also grew. So our language was organically growing the more people we included in it. The more people that were generating this content, the more we could say. Um, and I think it needs to be said that, you know, although there were so many people creating, it's, your content wasn't automatically getting into the language. Um, we have, you know, this uh, system where we kindly take your submission and we inspect it and we look it over and we review it against our guidelines and we see how it fits within our language um, as, as moderators. When, uh, when we first opened it up, we had a really high percentage of denials, right? Like we were just saying, you know, thanks, but no thanks. Um, some, of the, some of your work is, is not up to our quality standards. And it's not because we were, you know, trying to be too pretentious about it, but we really were trying to get that high level of quality. Um, and we realized that a lot of our creators were not, they're not professional icon designers. They didn't have their tenure at, you know, crafting these images. They weren't making well-crafted objects. So when we decide that an icon doesn't uh, quite make the cut, um, our moderators will give handwritten detailed feedback on every single piece that comes through. And we try to encourage our, our creators to um, you know, improve upon the things that aren't necessarily up to that quality level. And we found that um, by giving them resources and by, by encouraging them to be a little bit better in the way that they're crafting, um, they actually go out and do it and they get better. And then they submit some of the beautiful work you've seen tonight. So we, when we're doing that uh, review process and that critique um, and that feedback, we really look back at our design principles to inform what we're critiquing on. What's, you know, what's a yes and what's a no? What's beautiful and what's not? Um, and it really comes down to how things are being, uh, how can the communication be more effective? Great, Otto Neorath quote. So as you know, time went on and our number of uh, submissions and uh, additions to the language grew, um, the higher quality the content became. So we were getting more content that was better. And that's been happening you know, day over day since we've opened up submissions like that. Um, and I attribute it solely to um, one, like our amazing community who's, who's interest in create, creating and crafting this, uh, this beautiful language for everyone to use, um, you know, it, it really fires that. Um, and then co-opting that with an amazing tool set for people to learn and get better and uh, you know, make it into this collection of well-crafted objects um, really makes the whole content better. Um, and I think all of that starts with our solid foundation in design, which you know, was informed by those, those gut reactions from aesthetics. Um, so to uh, kind of wrap this up, I would say what makes visual communication beautiful is a well-crafted object using design principles to quickly convey a message in a way that accomplishes its goal. And I think this is one of, the, one of my favorite examples of a perfectly crafted icon that communicates just enough in a way that you're not gonna forget and uh, it does it instantly. So uh, I wanted to, uh, thank you. I wanted to quickly thank all of the creators who, who work that I used in this presentation. Um, and if anyone is interested, the, uh, the link there uh, will allow you to view all of the icons I used in this presentation and download them and use them and support those uh, creators so that they create more work and you know, expand our beautiful visual language even more.